Hello and welcome to Keep Talking, a community dialogue about mental health. This is a collaboration between Brattleboro Area Television and the Brattleboro Retreat. The retreat is a 180-year-old hospital, a psychiatric and addictions treatment facility which houses 120 beds in southeastern Vermont. We not only have a, uh, an inpatient program, but we also have a robust outpatient program as well as residential services. Today, I have in our studio our medical director of the LGBT inpatient program, which began in 2009, and I'm thrilled to have you here um, today. This is Corey Knoll. He ha is the medical director and has been since, when did you start, Corey, actually as the medical director? I started at the retreat um, just under four years ago, and so it's been about three years that I've been the medical director of the LGBT unit. So, Corey, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, you are a Vermont native. And that is something that many people covet, to be a Vermont native. Um, and you went to the University of Vermont for your medical education. Mm -hmm. What took you to Chicago? What did you learn there? So um, I'm a proud Vermonter. I, I feel, consider myself so fortunate to have, born, to have been born here and to have grown up here. Um, and that's one of the reasons I came back to Vermont. Um, I had a great experience in medical school at the University of Vermont and had decided that I wanted to pursue a career in psychiatry and really wanted to um, get as much exposure as I could. So there was something about being in a city that, mm -hmm. uh, that I believed really would make for um, a strong um, period of training. Burlington wasn't big enough? Burlington is wonderful <laughs> and, it, and it feels big again oh. now that I'm back in Brattleboro, mm -hmm. but um, it's not as big as Chicago. <laughs> And uh, it was a wonderful experience. I loved being in Chicago, met really amazing people, and um, had incredible training there. And I was really happy to be able to bring those experiences back to um, sort of return to the community of Vermont, some of what I had learned. And Vermont, Vermont tempted you back. You wanted to come back. Yeah, it didn't take much. It didn't take much. <laughs> did you come directly to the retreat, or did you? Uh, were you in other hospitals? I came directly to the retreat uh, from my residency training in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So started to look for positions in the New England area, and had, I knew actually less about the retreat than um, I probably could have, having grown up in Vermont. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as I got here and saw everything that were they were doing, including the LGBT unit, which I was so impressed by, mm -hmm. that the administration at the retreat was committed to this innovative thinking and, and creating new programming as um, evidenced by the Uniformed Services Program, now the Emerging Adult Unit. That um, was really exciting to me. And there were a lot of things I loved about the retreat, but that was one of the things that really drew me in. Fantastic. And we're really glad you came. LGBT, for those who don't know, and, and some people still don't, is stands for Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender. And this has been... Uh, for an 180-year-old hospital, this is a, one of our new innovations. Perhaps you can speak to, um, this started in 2009, mm -hmm. and maybe speak to what are the, what were the um, reasons behind beginning, um, from, from what you know, and how has the program evolved over time? Mm -hmm. The LGBT unit, and we often will use, um, you'll hear multiple letters added to that string of letters. Sometimes you'll hear a Q um, referring to questioning. Um, so really, and that's coming from an effort to, to be as all-inclusive as possible. Mm -hmm. um, it was started, the unit, um, based on the recognition that um, the LGBT populations um, are at higher risk for suffering from psychiatric illness or addiction mm -hmm. than the general population. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a lot of theories as to why that may be the case. Um, but these are also populations that are less likely to receive treatment. Um, there are a lot of barriers to treatment. Um, 
basically, I, I think it comes down to, in a lot of cases, um, either fear of prejudice or uh, individuals who have experienced prejudice, even in the healthcare system. Um, as a result of that, they uh, may be less likely to seek treatment for various conditions, mm -hmm. um, which puts them at higher risk of um, suffering the consequences of untreated psychiatric illness mm -hmm. or, or addiction. So in recognizing that, the retreat stepped up to say, what can we do to overcome some of these barriers? Mm -hmm. So the unit was created uh, in order to create a safe space where those um, individuals who do identify as, L as LGBT um, or questioning um, can come and get treatment and know that um, they are not going to encounter counter prejudice, that it's going to be a welcoming, supportive environment where they can address the issues that they're struggling with. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it, it's interesting. I, I was visiting with a friend this weekend, and actually a, a woman who is a lesbian, and um, but she's not connected to the mental health field particularly. And she said, why? Why, mm. why a unit for LGBT? I don't get it. And I thought that was very interesting. And I thought, oh, okay, if she doesn't get it, let's make sure other people get it. So could you speak to that a little bit? Sure, it's, it's a great question. And um, you know, I think we all would like to, to think that we live in an age when we wouldn't need such a unit, that an individual could go to any general adult psychiatric unit and know that they're going to receive supportive care that's um, um, accepting of their sexual orientation, their gender identity. Um, and, you know, I think at the retreat that probably is the case, but there are a lot of things that, um, there's a lot of education that needs to be done for healthcare providers um, that can optimize treatment for these individuals and minimize the chances that they're going to experience anything that, that may be prejudicial or unsupportive. Mm -hmm. um, an example may be um, somebody who is coming in um, and working on making a gender transition. So they may have been born male mm -hmm. um, and have been deemed biologically male, but internally they have experienced themselves as female. Um, they may have a lot of external characteristics that our culture and our societies um, immediately it interpret as male. Mm -hmm. So they're referred to as he, um, and there are various expectations that people have of them um, that they would fulfill the role that are expected in males, mm -hmm. but they feel female internally. Um, and so you can imagine the distress that that causes when somebody is referred to as he, but they experience themselves as she. Um, that certainly could be um, something that would contribute to anxiety or depression, this conflict. Mm -hmm. So on the LGBT unit, we're very careful and very proactive about making sure we're using the uh, pronouns that people feel most comfortable mm -hmm. with. Um, they may still appear very masculine um, but they consider themselves female mm -hmm. and referring the, to them as female using um, a female name if they choose to change their name um, using her and she can be an incredibly therapeutic yes. intervention something they've never experienced before mm -hmm. um, and um, you know that someday I hope will be done on any unit on a psychiatric unit on any general medical floor uh, but we're, we're not at that stage yet so this is an opportunity for us to um, make acute psychiatric care available to those who may not have been able to um, engage in those services before. Now you talk about um, arriving at the retreat um, uh, as someone who is possibly transgender and is, mm -hmm. is coping with um, that identity and, 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 and perhaps other things going on in their lives as well. Um, what are the other reasons that um, people end up choosing the um, LGBT program? Well, um, we're an acute care psychiatric unit, mm -hmm. so um, the people who are coming um, to our unit are in crisis, mm -hmm. um, suffering from an episode of depression that, that may be life-threatening, um, or experiencing symptoms of anxiety that are really de debilitating and require an inpatient level of care. Mm -hmm. Their sexual orientation or gender identity may or may not be involved with that presentation. Um, but we, we're um, aiming to help people work through depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, um, severe anxiety disorders, um, and often 
uh, the symptoms and signs of those illnesses are um, exacerbated, made worse by various social stressors which may be related to their sexual orientation or their gender identity. And a sense of safety. I'm, I'm certain that, uh, it, it, or it seems to me that, that um, uh, there is a level of safety and uh, that one would feel in a unit uh, that, that recognizes um, uh, the, the LGBT um, issues and, and can support that and not, and that they wouldn't run into prejudice and, and you know, perhaps being slighted. In exactly. Other, by, and maybe by other patients um, at, um, who don't understand that. And so they're in a place where they're with other patients that do understand that. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. encountering that kind of stress when you're working through a crisis is going to be counterproductive. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to create a space that minimizes the chances that um, there, that added uh, difficulty is going to be encountered. How do people find uh, the, the program at the retreat? We are open to take people from any, anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, most of our patient population does come from the New England area. Mm -hmm. We've had people come to our unit from as far away as Florida mm -hmm. um, and Ohio. Because there are not that many units that do this in the country, is, are there? I mean, how many? There are at most a handful. Um, there are probably two to three other specifically identified LGBT psychiatric units, um, but there are very few. Um, nationwide, mm -hmm. um, so it is innovative. It is, it is very innovative. new, and hopefully that 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 what you're creating now might be replicated in other places. We would love to see that happen. We feel we're very proud of the work we've been doing. It's it's a dynamic process. It's an ongoing process. There is not a lot of research out there on mm -hmm. um, working with. Um, the LGBTQ populations on an inpatient, inpatient psychiatric unit. Um, and so we're hoping to sort of maybe create some of, some of that data ourselves. Um, and we're hoping to serve as a model for, for other programs as well. That would be excellent. I, I think one of the things that struck me as you were speaking before is that you also are in a position to work with healthcare professionals, practitioners, doctors, um, as people transition out of inpatient, so you're in a you're in a position to talk with primary care facility pri primary care providers and say this is what this person needs because of such and such. And uh, the, it, it, do you find yourself doing a lot of liaison work? Yes, that has uh, become a big part of what we do. And um, because I think the word is getting out that our unit exists, people are hearing about what we're doing. We now on a fairly regular basis are getting requests from organizations, sometimes schools, um, other hospitals, uh, requests for us to come and, and um, provide some education. That, that's such a huge step and um, sort of a step toward getting to the point where maybe we wouldn't need an LGBT specific unit. Yeah. Um, but that kind of education um, can, go, uh, can really go a long way um, in allowing people to work through crisis. How would you suggest that, um, well, uh, I imagine that there's one way of um, contacting the unit is through our admissions mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, department, but also if somebody wanted to talk with someone at the, uh, about it, would admissions be the place to go at first, or is there someone on the staff who would be willing to talk about the unit with them? Um, admissions is probably the best place to start um, mm -hmm. with any inquiries. Um, they are um, very informed of the work we're doing mm -hmm. um, and would be able to probably direct phone calls and questions to staff members or, or to sort of help facilitate an admission if that were uh, what the question we're regarding. Um, we have a, a really incredible staff on our unit, all of whom are very dedicated to this work and are always happy to talk with people provide education um, and um, do everything they can to support these communities, the LGBT communities. So the age range of patients that you take into the, the, the inpatient program, wh uh, what is the age range? It's, we're an adult unit, which doesn't mean we don't uh, have patients who come who are under the age of 18. Mm -hmm. um, generally, the age range is between 
18 to 20 mm -hmm. um, and going up to 60, 70. Mm -hmm. um, but we have teenagers sometimes who um, are struggling with um, issues of sexual orientation or gender identity and um, feel that they may get more support in this unit as opposed to going to the adolescent unit. Mm -hmm. um, so we're sort of there to support anybody in any way that we can. Mm -hmm. Um, we tend not to go um, younger than sort of about the age of 14 or 15 mm -hmm. um, because that kind of treatment can be different um, and the needs of those individuals is a little bit different for that age group. But uh, generally it's people from their 20s up to their 60s or 70s. This may be a question for um, uh, any patient or any person um, experiencing either a behavioral health and or an addiction issue. Uh, oftentimes loved ones are standing in the background and not knowing what to do. Do you have suggestions, um, maybe even for, for this particular population, w what do loved ones do to be helpful? Hmm. And what can they say that's helpful? And that's a great question and uh, an a very important piece of anybody's treatment mm -hmm. is the support of family and, and social supports. Um, I think education is the key. Um, asking the questions is the most important first step. Um, asking somebody, what pronoun would you prefer, um, mm -hmm. he or she, um, is a great place to start. And in terms of getting more education on how to support um, their loved ones, um, Certainly when we're working with patients, um, almost invariably um, some interactions with family members on the part of the treatment team is, is part of their hospital course. Mm -hmm. There are resources out there for families as well. PFLAG um, is a great organization. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if I can say offhand what it stands for, um, but it's an LGBT support organization. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's parents and families um, of lesbian and gay individuals mm -hmm. is somehow PFLAG. PFLAG.org, I believe, they have a website. Mm -hmm. And um, they have facilities, um, I, th I believe, nationwide. Um, certainly a lot of information on the PFLAG site online. Mm -hmm. um, and they do um, support groups as well for the families of individuals. Uh, over the th now you've been there three years, correct? Almost three years? About or three, three, about three years three on years. that unit, yes. So what have you learned in that time that you feel like has been valuable? What, what have been the, 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 what's the kind of evolution you've had as a doctor there? It's been an amazing experience. Um, and I think one of the things that has been so uh, powerful for me is to observe the resilience of the individuals who are coming in to work with us. Mm -hmm. People who have faced um, stressors sort of beyond what I had even imagined before. Mm -hmm. um, uh, physical and sexual and emotional abuse. Um, and people's ability to work through that and overcome that is just astounding. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of the work we do is um, just allowing people to process and work through the crisis. Mm -hmm. um, the pharmacological, the medication interventions that we use, I think are, they're very important. They play their role. They, sometimes they don't, and mm -hmm. we don't al always use medications. Mm -hmm. um, but in my mind, that's never as big a piece of someone's recovery as the work they do um, on the unit and then beyond. Mm -hmm. Um, people are so resilient and so um, their will to to get better and feel better and get back to their lives and the things that are meaningful and important to them is um, remarkable. Mm -hmm. What might be different uh, on uh, the LGBT unit as opposed to um, uh, a, 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 another unit? I mean, what what are perhaps the activities or the the, the things that are stressed there? In a lot of ways, it's similar to the things you would see on any um, general adult psychiatric unit. Mm -hmm. There are groups that go on during the course of the day addressing various topics. Um, sometimes there are uh, groups helping people develop relaxation techniques um, or identifying new coping skills. The thing that is different on our unit is that all of the groups are LGBT-informed. And what I mean by that is, 
Um, the language is all inclusive. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the staff is educated and very adept at making sure that statements aren't being made that somehow are exclusive or prejudicial in some way. Mm -hmm. I think our attention to um, accepting somebody's gender identity as they want it to be accepted mm -hmm. um, is really important. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds like a small thing, but it's a huge thing in terms of somebody's recovery from crisis. Well, there um, needs to be a great crisis. deal of thoughtfulness, and it sounds like you are really being as thoughtful as you possibly can a, as a group and, and trying to train yourselves in, in I think, in a way that um, hopefully um, are, as generations, um, it, it, you know, I, I certainly see this in my own children. Um, there is a whole different language and a whole different way that people speak about each other. And I, I certainly hope that that progresses with with time, you know, and it's it's wonderful that your staff is also working so hard to, to make that happen. Yeah, and one of the exciting things that I've experienced is that it does start to become second nature, mm -hmm. and that feels really good, and it's nice to hear that you sort of observe in your, oh, definitely. In your children that um, the language is becoming more inclusive and mm -hmm. more accepting. Um, so it, that's... Um, Oh, to know they, that they correct things me. Are progressing. They correct me often. <laughs> <laughs> Good for so. them. <laughs> so um, again, we've talked about uh, the um, the importance of of um, reaching out to admissions if somebody was to choose to try this unit, and mm -hmm. and the possibility that perhaps if they really wanted to, they could they would have access to somebody who would could talk to them specifically, um, and. Uh, and so um, I, um, tell me a little bit more about who else is on staff. So um, we have an incredible staff. There are two psychiatrists on the unit, uh, myself and Dr. Carl Jeffries, who we're so fortunate to have. He's been there for over a year now. Mm -hmm. um, he did a wonderful presentation last week to the staff and to outside therapists about transgender and just a great uh, uh, mental health issues and, and treating the transgender population. It was just... Fabulous. He has done a lot of work with the LGBTQ populations and is a wealth of knowledge. Mm -hmm. We're very fortunate to have him. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, um, a nurse manager, Eileen Glover, who has been with the program pretty much from the start mm -hmm. um, and has really worked hard to, to keep it going and worked hard to help us develop the programming. She's been integral to the existence of this program. And she's done and a lot of community liaison. She has. Mm -hmm. um, that really has been something that she has, um, she's developed a skill in, um, in educating, mm -hmm. and she's really excited about doing it, mm -hmm. um, doing those activities. Um, and then the rest of our staff, we have nurses and mental health care workers, all of whom are on the unit because they want to be, because they're committed, mm -hmm. committed to providing this kind of care um, to this population. And it must um, be exciting for them to be on a unit that's so up and coming, new, and, and you know, learning all kinds of new things. It's exciting for everybody, and yeah. we feel really good about the work we do. Mm -hmm. um, we have patients who have come onto the unit who maybe don't identify as LGBT or T, um, and uh, should they need to come back to the hospital, this happens on occasion, um, they've asked to come back to this unit um, because they found it to be a really therapeutic environment. Mm -hmm. um, and that always makes us feel good as Absolutely. Well. well, I really want to thank you so much for spending your time with me today um, at pleasure. the studio, taking time out of what I know is a very busy schedule. We really depend on uh, you folks to come up and, and educate the community, so it's great that you're here. And I want to thank BCTV also for their collaboration with us. We couldn't do it without them. And I look forward to other Keep Talking programs in the future. Please come back. Mm -hmm.